Watch. because you're lifting up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I said, who came to worship the Lord this morning? Come on, we ain't the funeral home. We ain't the house of God. Come on. We ain't the great mighty physician, the one that can do all things, said he can make all things as impossible possible if we would just believe. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord this morning. Come on now. Don't get up because I ask you to. Get up because you love Jesus this morning. Praise his holy name. Yeah. 
attitude right there. Speak the word. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a big old hand clap. And the Paul was Paul to go to some bad places. The Apostle Paul, he was called to go to some very dangerous places. He was beat, almost left for dead several times. But he per persevered and he walked right into a behead of his own. But he knew he had to go because God spoke the word to him. He knew he had to go, man. Amen. And he went. You're right, brother. You're right. Amen. Amen. It's so good to be in the house of God. Amen. Yes, it is. Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to take our Sunday school classes so the children can take their places. Let's give the teachers a hand clap. Amen. 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 something. I get excited when God's got a word. Whew, hallelujah. I said, I get excited when God's got a word. It ain't about my words, but it's about His words. It's about what He has to say to the church, to us. And I love it when He reminds me of who He is. It's not who I am, but it's all about who He is. And what His word can do. You know, the word of God has power. The word of God is, 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 is powerful. If we'll just get that in us, and a lot of people walking around so defeated today because you don't realize who you are. You don't realize who God's created you to be. He's created you and I to be overcomers. He's created us to walk around in the power of His Word. And we'll begin to just receive. A, and I pray that, that you receive what the Lord wants to teach us this morning or, or minister to us this morning. Because you see, sometimes we forget who we are. Amen. Sometimes we forget how powerful our words can be. Not that I'm boasting or bragging on me because I'm nothing, but I didn't realize how powerful the words that I speak and you speak, that we speak when we speak those words, where they be. You know, the Bible says there's uh, 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 the power in the tongue. We can either speak blessings or we can speak cursings. And if we're not careful, we'll speak Cursing's on the very thing God's wanting to bless us with. Yeah. And we've got to be very careful. But this morning we're going to come out of Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Gotcha. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 through 17. Yeah. Living a Christian life, being a child of the Most High God, is a faith walk. Amen. Chapter 1, verse 16, if you're there. You would stand for the reading of the word. I don't know if you can stand every time because i got several places to go. But be ever how you be led. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. <clears throat> Yes. To the Jews first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Just shall live by faith. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. As I humble myself under your anointing power this morning, Father, Lord. I just ask yes. you, Lord, to anoint me, God. Lord, it's, Lord, you said your word will not go void, God, but it would go out and it would touch the ears and the hearts, God, this morning, that we would be receptive to your word, to your spirit, Father, this morning, that we may not leave the same, but God, it would change our minds, our hearts, Lord, the way we look at things, Father, that we would begin to look at things the way you would have us to see those things, speak those things as you would have us to speak those things, confess those things as you would have us to confess those things, Father. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you right now for what you're about to do in this house this morning. Lord, I thank you for your prayer precious anointing for your spirit I feel here today God uh, Lord I thank you God yes. uh, Lord on. that you're going to heal God your, your word you, says God by your stripes uh, we are healed Father and Lord I proclaim healing to be released in this place this morning God uh, Lord I, I, I proclaim Lord that you release burdens relieve burdens this morning Father God and God Lord that your will be done in this uh, teaching or service this morning Lord and Lord to you be all the glory the honor and the praise 
things in this house. And everybody here say amen. amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. amen. Now, we're going to read that again. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. Somebody say power of God. Power of God. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, re as it is written, the ju let me reread that. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Yes. The just shall live by faith. Faith is a way the just shall live. And you can be seated. I am not ashamed of the gospel. The gospel is the good news of Jesus. The gospel is the, is the word of God. And we shouldn't be ashamed of the word of God. Paul said he wasn't ashamed of the gospel. Uh, 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 he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Are we ashamed? Are you ashamed of who you are this morning, Christ? Have you gotten to where when you go out and you get amongst the 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 the, the, the wolves and, and the thorns and the people that sin it? Are you ashamed to speak the word to them? Are you ashamed to go up uh, and tell that man at the beer at the at the counter with the beer, the twelve pack of beer, that brother, you don't need that. That's not what's going to solve your problems. Because in the morning, your problems are going to be the same as when you went to sleep that night. Uh, are we ashamed? I tell you, we was on our way back from uh, that women's retreat, and I sit in that van, and as the lady was standing over there, and God done said He wanted to talk to that lady, and I'm like, Sister Patty, uh, that one woman's over there waiting on you to come talk to her. See, I was trying to get out of it. I'll just be honest. That woman's waiting on you, Sister Patty. She said, huh? And she said, no, oh, no, no, not me. And I'm thinking, oh, God. And I said, okay, God, if I'm really here, and you want me to go speak a word to that woman, then Lord, you just show me. Well, the next thing I know, I look over, this woman's about three car car spots down the road, a row and she's in her car and she looks over she's just smiling at me. I said, oh Jesus, I get it. I'm going, Lord. So I had to make myself get out of the van to go tell her about the gospel of Jesus. See, we can't become ashamed of the word of God. And when I went over to that lady and I looked at her and she kind of looked at me funny. I said, I'm not a strong, I'm not a murderer, honey. I said, I love Jesus and we've been on this women's retreat and I said and I was sitting nowhere in my van and, and, and the Lord spoke to me and told me to come over here and tell you something. And I said, I really I didn't know what I was going to say until I got here. But now I know God said he loves you. And I spoke those words to her. That woman began to cry. Tears began to come down her streets. And she said, I know. I said, oh, honey, are you a backslidden Christian? She said, yes, I am. I said, oh, my God. My God wants you to know he loves you. And he's waiting on you to come home. That's all I said to her. She looked at me and she said, honey, be careful. And I thank you. And was just a straight, straight tears streaming down her eyes. But what if? What if I hadn't obeyed God? What if that woman? So I don't know if she went back to God. I hope and pray she did. But what if she been crying out, God, God, if you still love me, God, if you still here, God, send one to me. Send one that'll let me know. And see, what if I hadn't? Uh, it would have been on my hands and I'd been most miserable. But you see, we can't be ashamed of the gospel because the gospel has power in it. The word of God has power in it. We can't shy away from what God has called us to do. If God is in you and living in you, you're born again, child of God, you've got to be obedient. The Bible says obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. Does it not say that? Amen. See, we got we got to know that when God says, go speak to that lady. Go speak to that one over there. Go go tell her I said I love her. Go pray for that lady. Go tell that guy at the in the, in the aisle there uh, going down to the to the to the to the cooler to get him a beer that he don't need it. How many of you willing to obey the Lord and do that very thing? Because you see one day we're going to come and I said this last week or the week before. We're going to become we're going to be face to face with Jesus and he's going to say enter in my good and faithful servant or he's going to say to Apart from me, you work of inequity. I never knew you. Lord Jesus, I don't want any of us to ever hear those words. Amen. We got to realize, see, who we are in God. We're God's messengers. We're God's disciples. We're going out and trying to proclaim them to come in. That's why the church house ain't full today. We ain't doing our part. Maybe we are. Maybe some of us are over. Uh, and the enemy's telling you to stop doing it. Don't stop. Keep pressing. Keep doing it. Keep inviting. Keep telling them about the good news of Jesus. Keep telling them how Jesus 
Jesus brought you out and what he's done in your life. You see, uh, we got to speak the gospel. And we've got to speak to the lost and dying world that's out there. But who are you this morning, God? I know who I am. I'm a preacher. I'm a teacher. I'm a Holy Ghost tongue talking fire Baptist, fire Holy Ghost filled devil chasing child of the most high God. Who are you this morning? Are you a child of the most high God? Because if you are, you should be chasing the devil and the devil shouldn't be chasing you. I told you I went through something for a month. Four weeks. Four weeks. And honey, it still is a brewing. But that's okay. That's okay. I know what's at the end of the book. I'm a winner either way. I'm a winner because I'm a born again, blood bought child of the most high God. And if we're a, 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 a child of God God, then we have no, there's nothing else, there's no losing in it. You're a winner. You're a winner Mom. because you serve God. You're a winner because you love God. You're a winner because of who you are in God. That's right. Don't be ashamed of who you are. I heard a man talking. He said, you know, I went to a meeting. He said, it was a business meeting and with a bunch of men, business meet, men in the room. And I was like, well, what do you do for a living? He said, well, I'm a preacher. He said, but I could say, well, I'm just a, an executive of so-and-so and so-and-so. He said, but you know what? I wanted him to know I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher. I'm who God called me to be. See, we can't be ashamed of who God's called us to be. See, the Bible says if you're a friend of, wor of the world, you're not a friend of God. See, when you get saved and born again, see, something changes on the inside of you. I don't got to make you change. I don't got to make you talk right. I don't. Have, I mean, I may lead you to the Lord, but it ain't my job to tell you, hey, sis or brother, you need to talk like this, you need to walk like this, and you need to dress like this, and you need to act like this. That ain't my job. When you get up from there and you got and you had a head-on collision with God, something about you's going to change. Honey, you ain't going to be the same old, same old. And listen, God works on you. He worked on me. I remember. I remember the things I used to do before I met God. But when I got up from God, from there, from that altar, all I wanted was God. All the way was to find a church that I could go to to hear and, and be fed the word of God and, and to do the will of the Father. The devil has many things out there to foster you into his into his kingdom to pull you into what he's got for you. But what he's got for you is a road of destruction. What God has for you is a, what, a road of life. A road that you're going to live forever and ever, ever and ever. But see, the enemy's got traps. He's got snares. And I wouldn't even go in there this morning, but I'm going by the leading of the Lord. There is snares right there. There there are snares. When you walk out that door, the enemy's right there trying to wait and grab exactly what God's going to give you this morning. Come on. To tear it down. To destroy it. To make you not believe the word of God. To make you not believe what God's word says. That's his job. He'll do those things to get you, to devour you, to, to cause you to be the most miserable person in the world. He's, he's, a, he's, old, he's, a, he's a good at his job, but I tell you, God's better at his. <laughs> God's better at his. I wrote this down. Christ means, Christ, everybody knows Jesus Christ. And a lot of times you'll think, well, what is Jesus' name? Jesus Christ? Well, Christ means the anointing one. We know Christ was the anointed one. And anointing means to rub, uh, rub on and rub into. You know, we get the oil, we anoint you, we rub it on you, rub it into you. It's not in the oil that does it. It's in the anointing of God through the oil that, that, that does whatever it's going to do. The Bible is the gospel of the anointed one. The anointing is supernatural. The world can't understand the anointing. It's a supernatural divine enablement. It is God's super ability on your natural ability to do what you could not do in your natural ability. Things that you can't do, the anointing one can do. It says all things are possible to those who believe. There is nothing impossible to those who believe. Some things that I can't accomplish or you can't accomplish in the natural is a supernatural divine enablement through the power of God. Through the power of His Word. Someday or one day in your life or in my life, we're going to need God. I had my 16-year-old son. He's not here this morning. And I pray that you don't put him down. But I pray you, you begin to pray for my son. Amen. I'm Touch in a him. war over his life. Touch him, Jesus. And I'm telling you, 
that I had him to come into my kitchen and he said, Mama, and these are words I've been longing to hear. Is you just don't know what kind of battle I've been fighting with my son. Bless your Lord. And if you ain't fighting a battle with your children, praise God, pray for mine. Because, honey, the devil, he attacked your children as well as he attacks you. But I'm going to tell you, when you got a praying mama, you got a praying grandmama, you got a praying daddy, the devil has no choice but to release in the name of Jesus. But he come in the kitchen, he said, Mama, he said, I know you believe in God, and I know that you, your God answers your prayers. And he said, Mama, he said, God, I believe God allowed me to go through this to show me that I really needed him. I said, Colin, I've been telling you, I need God. You need God. I said, son, God God is the most important thing in your life. And I know you're at that age that friends all around. I mean, we, I know the influences around the, the children, their friends and things. And, and I began to pray about his friends. And, and I began to see God just recently. You know, I told y'all God was going to answer somebody's prayers before Sunday. Well, he answered mine. Matter of fact, he answered two of them. And um, I said, son... I prayed, and, 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 and God moved in a, in a friendship situation. And you got to be careful what you speak out your mouth. And I said, you know what, son? I'm going to pray about these friends you got. And I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for them because you know what? I may be the only one praying for your friends. I said, but you, <coughs> Bless your I said, but you know, I'm going to pray that, that, that if they're doing stuff they shouldn't be doing, that they're going to get in trouble too. They, that their mamas will know what they're doing so they don't go down the wrong road. I said, because you've got good, nice, sweet friends, and I don't believe all of them's doing stuff, bad stuff, but some of them are. And, and I called out the ones that was, and he said, Mama, you're right, they are. And he would never tell me before. So I know it was God. And I began to pray, and next thing I know, things begin to happen in this one son's, just one man, young man's life. And, and I said, oh, my God. And I, God reminded me of what I spoke out of my mouth. See, you got to be careful. And it's a good thing what happened. It's a good thing. It may seem bad, but it's a good thing. Because sometimes we think the bad thing is so bad when the bad thing is really what God is working in to turn it out for good. Do you understand what I'm saying? It, it seems like a bad thing, but it's going to be end up being a good thing because of who God is. Because He can take the supernatural, divine enablement, you get that this morning. He's supernatural. Serving God is a faith walk. Praying to God is a faith talk. When I pray to God, I can't see God. I can't see that He's even hearing me. But in my heart, I believe with all my heart, He said He would hear my, He would hear my prayers. Uh, he would hear me, and I've got to believe that He's hearing me when I pray. Because if I don't believe that He's hearing me, then I pray in vain. Come on. If you don't believe God can supply your every need, then you're believing in vain. You come up here and you pray, get prayer for healing and you go back to your seat and say, well, God didn't heal me. Then you just come up here in vain. You don't believe nothing. God. You don't believe what God's Word said. But God's word, ha word has power. For three weeks I pled the blood. Matter of fact, I started out saying, thank you, Lord, for my health. The next thing I know, I got sick. Thank you, Jesus, for my health. I said it every day. Thank you, Jesus, for my health. Thank you, Jesus, for my health. And the next thing I know, I got sick. Sick? Real sick. I've never been that sick. Honestly, three weeks of sickness. But through the whole time of sickness, how many of you know when you get sick, the adversary brings on oppression. He wants to push you on down and, and it just discourage you and make you feel like you're going to die and, and all these things. But through that sickness, uh, I kept proclaiming God's word and I said, God, Come by on. your stripes that Jesus bore, I am healed. So devil, you take your sickness back to the pit of hell where it come, came from. I mean, I'm talking dizziness. I'm talking you want to throw up, but you never did. I'm talking you don't want to get out of the bed. You feel so bad. Come your on. body hurts from head to toe. I'm talking... I can't imagine what Job went through. Yeah. Ain't got no right to complain. So I began to keep proclaiming the word over me every day. And still kept saying, thank you for my help. How hard is that when you're down? And you're so down, you can't even pray for yourself. It gets rough. It gets hard. But you see, the enemy wants us to feel like we can't make it. Make us feel like we ain't got the victory. And there's no power in the word of God. There's just no power. God's word is in vain. The devil is a liar. He can't tell you the truth. Come on. But I couldn't accomplish getting better and well on my own. In my natural. I was taking all kinds of medicine. All right. A little bit of antibiotic. Use some X, about two bottles. Nyquil. BC's. 
But I need what the Word says. The Word says many of the afflictions of the righteous. But He will deliver us out of them all. Out of them all. See, you got to, the Word is power. And I don't know, you may not be going through nothing today, <laughs> and you may not go through nothing tomorrow, next week, but there's going to be a time you're going to go through something. Yeah. And you're going to need the Word of God. And you're going to hear the enemy in one ear telling you this, but you're going to have to get in the Word and cover your circumstance with the Word of God. If you're going through financial problems, what do you do? You get in the Word and you say, God, you said you shall supply my every need. And He'll even supply your wants. But if we'll believe the Word, it's like, it's done. It's coming, God. I believe your Word. Your Word says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It may form, but it ain't going to prosper. You may have to go through a little something-something, but you're going to come out better than you want to hear. Because, see, the three Hebrew boys, when uh, 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 Meshach, uh, what's her name? I said it this morning. I called Eric to them. There you go. Went through the fire furnace, right? But they came out on the other side. They came out showing who their God was. And see, that's what God wants us to show who He is. For His glory, we go through things. See, we go through things not just for us, yeah, for us to grow and to learn and to call on God and to believe His Word and trust Him, but it's for the glory of God. My aunt was a born-again, saved, born-again Christian, baptized. She got cancer. On her deathbed, she was giving God glory. She wouldn't cry. She wouldn't sad. She was just a happy-go-lucky lady. And I said, if that ain't a testimony right there. She was just so, uh, you could just see the glory of God on her. She hadn't been saved very long, probably about a year. But I thank God she found Jesus before she got sick. Why she got sick and died of cancer, I don't know. There's things, there's mysteries that we don't know, we won't ever know until we get there and we want to ask Jesus. But I don't believe we'll be wanting to ask Jesus nothing when we get there because it's going to be full of glory and we're just going to be up there. I mean, I don't think we're going to be thinking about nothing negative. It's all going to be good and positive and, and we're going to have a new body, a new life and, and, and just praising Jesus. But you see, it's the supernatural, divine enablement of God that can come down and touch someone and heal them just like that of cancer. Because God will put His super on our natural to enable you to do what you can't do. Yep. I'm going to tell you, Easter Sunday I was sick. I believe God enabled me to get be here and make it through that whole day. Amen. God got me through it the next week. Oh, it was bad. But... But God, still going to serve you, Lord, till my dying day. I made a promise to the Lord a long time ago that I was going to serve Him. And I've failed God since then. We have all have, I'm sure. But I thank God that when I failed Him, He didn't let me go. How many of you know when you're a child of God and you try to get away from God, He won't let you go? I'm telling you, I have tried to quit several times. But it's like that anointing. He just rubs me a little bit right here and right there. Just anoints my head. Gets my thoughts back to lining up with, with his word. Back on fire again I am. And that's when I guess I look there while I'm still here. Because of who he is. We can't keep ourselves. Oh, you ever try to keep yourself? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 27. I think that's where we're going. Isaiah chapter 10. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 10 and 27. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder and his yoke from off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. 
because of the anointing of the word of God, yokes will be destroyed. Burdens will be lifted. See, if you have burdens and yokes, the anointing will, will remove burdens and the anointing will destroy yokes. There is a power available that will remove burdens and destroy yokes. Maybe you're burdened, maybe you're burdened down. Maybe, you know, the anointing destroys sickness. The anointing will, if someone walked in here with drug addictions, will, will destroy the drug addiction. It will take, a, like Derek said, uh, his testimony, he's got an awesome testimony. And uh, I've not been down that road, but uh, as he said, when he, he went, he gave his life to Jesus. And he was at that, at that altar and he couldn't understand what was going on. He was shaking and had his hands up and couldn't, it never felt nothing like that. That was the anointing of God taking every bit of that drug addiction out of his body. See, if you've got nicotine addiction, you can get delivered and free of nicotine. Don't let the devil tell you you've got to hang on to it one more day. When you get your mind made up. Then you will be an overcomer. But it's going to take you to overcome and believe in the Word of God before you can overcome the addiction. Does that make sense? If you want to be free of something, the Bible says He will destroy the yoke and remove the burdens. The source of the power is not in me, but it's in the Word of God. <coughs> The gospel is the power of God. Power, the meaning of power is the ability to get results. That's the meaning of power. The word of God is the ability to get results. What do you want to be free from? What do you want to be delivered from? What's keeping you back, holding you back? <coughs> Through the word of God you can be free. By his stripes you are healed. By his stripes that he bore, you are healed. Amen. If I walk around for the four weeks or the three weeks that I was sick and say, oh, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. That's how the world talks. I'm going to live, I'm going to live, and I'm going to declare the works of the Lord. I'm going to live, I shall live, because God is for me. Who can be against me? He is my healer. He bore the stripes for my healing. See, that's how you speak. Not that you're not sick, because if I say, well, I'm not sick, I'm lying. Come on. I may be sick, I may be afflicted, but look, guess what? My Bible tells me God's going to deliver me out of them all. That's right. Right? What it says. Let's go to Hebrew chapter 1, verse 3. <coughs> praise the Lord. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. This is the 